Now, I'd like to talk about some uh, free market healthcare solutions. Uh, so, uh, often I hear from the left and uh, socialists that, you know, nobody should be able to, you know, profit from, uh, you know, sickness or essential service of uh, others. But uh, you and I know that, you know, the free market, it can deliver, uh, you know, higher quality and often more cost effective uh, outcomes. Uh, now, um, could you provide some examples of or cases in other jurisdictions where that's worked? Well, to be honest, I think uh, there are very few in the Western world, I think, that actually qualify as free market, including the United States. So um, I think what you really should be saying is that the private sector has a role in, in the provision of health care, and that is something that uh, uh, certainly the, um, uh, the centre-right in Australian politics believes. And I think uh, uh, it, even in most uh, Western jurisdictions, in one form or another, the private sector is involved. It's not... Uh, uh, it's not a free market in terms of uh, uh, ultimately because uh, um, except with, with the notable exception of the United States where private payers and private insurers dominate, uh, effectively um, government subsidies in one form or another do, whether it's uh, Australian style Medicare or the UK style NHS. So, um, but uh, I think it's absolutely essential that the private sector is involved. There is no shame. Uh, contrary to what the left says, uh, in uh, making a reasonable return on your investment if you're a private uh, operator in the healthcare space. Uh, um, effectively, if there is an incentive to, uh, uh, to get a return by contributing uh, your, your capital, your expertise, your technical, uh, um, you know, your technical products, as well as your, uh, your private services, if you're, say, a medical practitioner, um, and, and, and I've got to say in Australia too, Tim, and when um, doctors and the AMA claim that uh, um, medical practitioners are free and independent, they're not. Uh, they're absolutely dependent on um, the, the teat of Medicare and uh, particularly in the case of medical specialists on, on private health insurance. So they, uh, they take what they can get and... Uh, um, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, many do doctors as a, as a profession are probably the greatest socialists uh, that we have. And now one of the uh, policy proposals that's put out by uh, free market think tanks, including uh, some in Australia, is the idea of a health savings account where you put uh, money from uh, your income into a dedicated uh, health account to pay for your health care. How is this uh, more efficient than the, the current system that we have? Look, I think health savings accounts is an idea that's been around for a long time and it works quite successfully in a small country like Singapore. Uh, and I personally don't have a problem with the health savings accounts or people self-insuring. I don't think people should be forced to take out private health insurance. I mean, they should be encouraged to provide for themselves. Uh, and, um, and and certainly uh, if there are appropriate incentives, not just private health insurance rebates to help them to do that, then, then that's appropriate. Um, I think the problem with health savings accounts is the risk that um, you uh, don't have enough in the account if you really have a a, a major need, say you've um, you know, got a experience with life-threatening cancer and uh, you know a series of surgeries, uh, lots of um, chemo and radiotherapy, uh, lots of time in hospital. Um, that could cost tens, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And of course, some some surgical pr procedures actually can do that in one hit. So you need to be able to to provide for that. And uh, and more to the point, I suppose, if you're talking about policy, you need to be able to know how somehow though the gap is going to be filled when the money runs out of the account. So, uh, but look, look, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem in principle with the appropriate drawdown on superannuation uh, to, to fund or, or to, to provide for uh, dealing with uh, unexpected episodes of care. But one way or another, I think we do need to get encouraged people, particularly people on reasonable incomes to provide more for themselves uh, and not just rely on the taxpayer or fellow taxpayers and the public system to do it all for them. And uh, there's also a lot of um, 
uh, free market health experts who say that the way that private health insurance is set up at the moment needs to be reformed. Uh, you mentioned there that some medical expenses can, can be quite large, and so they also advocate that private health insurance should be only catastrophic health insurance uh, for, for those, you know, when you have you know, cancer or something like that, which incurs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is, is, th is that something you agree with as well? No, I, I don't actually. I think that private health insurance needs to be uh, um, as uh, relevant to the needs of people as possible. And if uh, uh, younger and healthier people, for instance, uh, um, keep their private health insurance for um, hospital cover just in case, but uh, want to have um, um, extras cover so they can have their massages and they can have their physio and they can have their um, you know, optical and so on. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I don't have a problem with the taxpayer giving a, a private health insurance rebate because uh, um, you know, some time ago I, some work was done that, uh, by, by Professor Ian Harper, who's now a governor of the Reserve Bank, or sorry, you know, Reserve Bank governor, um, who he actually was able to show that for each dollar of um, private health insurance rebate that the um, federal government kicks in, that actually saved two dollars in federal and state health spending. So it was, uh, you know, spend one, save two. Uh, so there was a, a public benefit in doing that. I think the, the issue with uh, using the rebate at the moment, though, is that uh, some private health insurers have got a bit complacent, a bit lazy when it comes to um, making sure that they are running uh, as um, efficiently as possible and, and covering as much as possible. Um, and that's, you know, and that's a question that uh, has to be asked, but I suppose it goes back to the question, the other question of politics. So, uh, is removing the private health insurance or modifying it severely too hard a political ask? But the other side of it, which no government, Labor or Coalition, seems to want to, to actually grasp, is uh, um, the fact that premiums for private health insurance go up, and therefore the cost of the private health insurance rebate, because of the cost of providing care. You know, it's it's the, uh, the cost of the doctors, the cost of the hospitals, the cost of the optical and dental and so on and so forth, the cost of the uh, the, the prostheses, the medical devices and other things that uh, get stuck into you, like your artificial hips. Um, it's uh, yeah, effectively taking on those vested interests. Prostheses, because they're, they're done, you know, basically manufactured and supplied by big multinational companies, politically they're much easier to manage, but taking on taking on the medical lobby and particularly taking on the AMA about uh, um, payments to doctors and therefore doctors' income is a, a very difficult political ask and I don't think either side of politics dares to go there and I'm very disappointed with that. Uh from our discussion, it, it seems to be that both in the, the public sector and private sector that the cost of uh, health care is increasing. How, how, do, how do we get it? Because obviously in other industries we've, or, uh, that are governed by the free market, we've seen you know, prices reduced. I mean, just look at technology, for example. Um, how, how can that be achieved in, in the health sector? Well, I think... Uh you need to ensure that uh, public regulation, government regulation, uh, allows for a level playing field in um, price negotiations between payers and providers, so insurers or governments and uh, hospitals, doctors and so on. Uh, at the moment, the, the playing field is tilted very much in favour of the provider um, and regulations effectively tie particularly private insurers' hands behind their back. So um, the bottom line is that uh, health cost inflation is running at uh, five to six percent a year, um, which is roughly you know, more than double uh, CPI. So, um, and it just keeps going up and enough and up. Uh, and as I said at the start of this conversation, uh, the demand pressures that we're going to have uh, in 10, 20 years' time are just not going to be able to cope with that. And certainly, I think uh, the national budget and I think the economy as a whole are not going to cope with that. So. Some really hard questions need to be asked now before it's too late, but because of the political climate, and I think this is one of the great regrets of the 2014 budget and the co-payment, is that those questions are not going to be asked and neither side of politics is going to have the uh, political courage to deal with them. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net 
and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.